Welcome to the Royal Palace of Madrid. We're here on a quick little tour and this place is huge. It's 1.5 million square feet, which is really fascinating. It started in 1738, I think the building and there's like 3,400 rooms. Is that right? This place is gonna be crazy. We've toured some palaces before and we are really excited to see what's inside. Lots of decadent, magnificent, beautiful stuff. So here we go. Number one thing or number five thing to do in Madrid. Who knows? Stunning in here, guys. I can't even take it all in. of the palace now and we made a huge fail unfortunately you're not allowed to take pictures except for in the very entrance of it the staircase I guess um, so that's kind of a bummer because we know a lot of people aren't able to make it but would still love to see it um, so we're going to share some pictures that are online with you guys it was incredible I've been to the palace of Versailles outside of Paris and it felt comparable in a lot of the rooms the marble crown molding oh my gosh i cannot say enough about that everything online and we like to follow the rules and there's lots of details so we always like to make sure we we know what we're doing are we going to bring the gimbal we're going to bring the drone are we going to get there early do we have to go through security what can we bring inside what can we not bring inside all these things there's lots of rules always follow the rules and this place didn't have any understanding about what to do or what not to do so we thought and we bought these tickets with the expectation knowing that we would film it for you because we like to document our experiences number one because honestly i'm going to forget what i saw today most of it um because i didn't get to film it inside so what we decided to do is uh we're going to tell you about some of the different rooms that really stood out to us and we're going to show you some pictures that are freely accessible online, uh, copyright free, and um, walk you through some of our experience. But knowing that they are like really hell bent on making sure that you don't take any pictures inside, which is really funny. You can take some pictures and then there's just like this set of rooms there. They're like, no pictures, but it doesn't say anything like that online. There's nothing posted except for when you get to the room and you're halfway through your tour. And then they're like, no pictures. And so, um, huge disappointment. I feel like it's the greatest injustice in our generation for, for um, people that are documenting life uh, is to not have to, to not be able to take pictures or videos. It doesn't make sense to me um, because it would get more exposure, more traffic. It was it, if we posted, people would have more of an understanding and then they would want to go experience it themselves. But right now, we're gonna leave it up to our imagination. And I guess the hope is the old school mindset from 1700, which is you gotta come see it for yourself. So, I would say you gotta come see it for yourself too, but it's hard, because you didn't get to see all of it already. Hmm, interesting. Maybe after we leave, they'll adopt a social media policy where they can actually film inside and they'll, you know, get to it, step it up in the real world. I think they're probably under the same mentality of like Barcelona with Uber. They're just behind the curb, led by taxi unions. So I'm gonna blame this one on the taxi unions of Barcelona.
Greek Oriental style. It was a smoking room and it was just really amazing to see how they brought different pictures and motifs from uh, different countries in Asia to decorate the walls in that room. I also really loved all the chandeliers. The banquet hall was stunning. It was like a blue stone archways above the whole room and it was just phenomenal. It's incredible to think of like what people valued back then and how they valued certain objects or things just because of the history of that object or the history of that painting or the history of who created it or um, you know a certain jewel had so much value and I just couldn't help but think like back in the day entering that banquet hall like what would be going through someone's mind in terms of all of the over-the-top gold and marble and stones and jewels and paintings and everything so intricately created it was amazing the amount of detail put into every room and the fact that every room was different was really really tremendous for me to see I really enjoyed the fabrics on the on the wall it wasn't like a wallpaper it was like a wallpaper with a wallpaper with a wallpaper and there was designs on top of designs on top of designs and there was one room that had vines all over it and the vines started in fabric went to marble went to another fabric went to another type of design all the way up the wall and then the ceramic rooms were, were fantastic they had ceramic on the base of the floor going all the way up and through the ceiling different kinds of designs I love the way that they took the stories that they prized and put them everywhere they put them in the tables they put them in the floors they put them in the ceilings they put them in the the ceramic vases they put them in the pictures of course the tapestries it was really really special to see and I've been to some of these kinds of palaces before and I don't think I've seen that much immaculate detail and pristine uh, individualism in each room that was really something special I mean just like Ali said the smoking room was so different than the the meeting and dining rooms um, you know it just kind of feels like after seeing the Palace of Madrid Everybody else that built their built their palace kind of gave up when they did certain rooms. You know, they just said, well, we got to have another one. This place has 3,418 rooms, I think. And we only saw like 15 of them. And I was blown away. So that is really, really special. And, you know, I thought to myself, when I build a house one day, I'm going to make one of these rooms. And that sticks with me and I'm gonna replicate some of these amazing concepts they had in 1700s to build uh, something for myself I think yeah here is the line of people currently waiting to try to get a ticket it's 11 o'clock in the morning the palace has been open for an hour hour and a half, hour and a half. Uh, back at the market for the third time. As our Austrian friend Schwarzenegger says, I'm back. And today I'm getting a calamari sandwich because why not? I've never heard of such a thing. A sandwich of calamari. Um, I think Schwarzenegger says, I'll be back. Perfect. Um, I'm pretty sure we can't understand anything he says. But that's beside the point. We'll elect him anyway. We'll fly ahead. Highway to the danger zone. Calamari sandwich. Um, a little pesto, olive oil, and mayonnaise. It's very nice. 
the bread's nice. The mayonnaise and the oils are perfect. Extra virgin olive oil, of course, because we're in the middle of Spain. Oh, and the calamari is so fresh. Mm. I can tell it wasn't frozen because it's sitting right there. Wow. Um, this might be worth the round trip flights to Madrid. Typically, I'm not a mayonnaise guy, but it really doesn't work with me. And I understand why mayonnaise is around, because of things like that. Mm. You're welcome. Thanks for coming with us too, Richard.